I will ask this, are there certain forms of exercise like weightlifting versus cardio that you find give you an especially big boost in what we're calling energy? And here, this could be cognitive energy, it could be physical energy, but a, a readiness for the next thing. Yeah, first I gotta back you up on this. I love backing up your 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 science. So do you ever do you ever ruck march, like put on a heavy weight and yeah, ruck? Pe uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, Peter Atia got me into this. He got me into doing a long Sunday, instead of a long Sunday run, throwing on a lightweight vest or a ruck and going out for like three hours. And the first 20 minutes I find I always want to go faster and get it over with. But then I've learned that the real pain in it mm -hmm. sets in around an hour, and then the beauty sets in around 90 minutes where you're like, I could do this all day, all night, and I never want to stop. See, that's when you were describing how this chemical, these chemicals get released, and once you're in that automatic mode, because in the SEAL teams, you're doing maritime operations for a month, and then you're going to do some kill house shooting, and so you're not carrying a bunch of weight, and then you go out to the desert, and now you're putting on 80 pounds, and you're going on a, like day one, you get out there, you're going on an 80 pound ruck march. And the first freaking 17 minutes, the first 23 minutes, just suck. They just suck. And what was beautiful was by the time I was, you know, 23, 24 years old, I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna suck for 17 minutes. And then it's gonna be, I'm gonna be a robot and it doesn't matter anymore. And I can just keep going forever. So it's, it sounds like what you're saying is what I experienced my, basically my whole adult life. There's gonna be a little break in period mentally where, where you think this totally sucks. And then you just can keep going for a really, really long time. And it's not that big of a deal to your question of, is there any form of exercise that gives me that energy? boost? I, I would have to say like the, the high intensity sort of anaerobic blast, you know, whether it's on the bike or on the rower or, you know, swinging a kettlebell hard, something like that, that last 10, 15 minutes, that's a really good way to, you know, peak my mentality for the day. Do you do the cold water thing? I mean, you just yeah. certainly did a lot of it in buds. I mean, do you do you force yourself into cold water? I, I, have, I, have a, I have a cold bath in my house and I get in every day. Yep. How long are you spending in there? Usually around five minutes, mm -hmm. five but minutes. Before you train or after no, you train? No, after. So mm -hmm. this is something I haven't played with yet. And mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, I'm like such a, I, I don't like to make a bunch of effort for something. So for me, going downstairs, getting in the ice tub, and I guess you only need to do it in the, before you work out, you only go a minute, right? Do a minute to three. Joe and I have been texting back yeah. and forth about this. There's a lab at Stanford, Craig Heller's lab that works on cold and performance. And the athletes at Stanford, mainly the, the cross country team and the football players are doing cold before their training because of the huge increase, huge long lasting increase in dopamine and adrenaline that's caused by that. They're finding it increases performance mainly by waking people up and getting them focused. It creates energy, yeah. basically. And students, you know, everyone thinks of like, oh, athletes are all super motivated. This is no pick against Stanford athletes in particular. A lot of athletes are excellent at what they do because they're very lazy when they're not training. This is true. Not all athletes, but a lot of athletes are. And so they're really good at resting and recovering so they can train more. But a lot of athletes have a hard time getting into, into gear to, to train every day. And the cold is a great stimulus, right? It's a four, it's like a four shot of espresso kind right. of stimulus without all the jitters. Yeah. I think uh, maybe going in there for a minute would be cool before a workout. I will say this. So I had, I had like a long workout and it was a Saturday, which means on Saturday I do jujitsu kind of in the morning around 10 o'clock. And I had like a long workout, went for a long run. It was hot and I just got in the ice bath and I sat in there for like seven minutes, like the deep chill. I got out and then I went right to jujitsu and I felt awful. I felt absolutely awful, like tight, cold, and it took me an extra three rounds to get warmed up again. So that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for pre-work icing. But I'm gonna try this short because I was talking to another friend of mine. They're like, oh no, only go a minute before. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll give that a try. If it's really cold, uh 30 seconds to a minute is going to get you the this big release in adrenaline and, and dopamine. Actually, and, one time I did try, you know, the um, the the chamber that blasts cold air on oh, you? Yeah. The cryo. Yeah, the cryo. And I did that for, for like a minute or mm -hmm. whatever. And that did make me feel pre-workout pretty good. Yeah, I think that the... The whole notion of cold for metabolism, you know, people say, well, it's not that big of an increase in metabolism. Look, as far as I'm concerned, the main function of the cold for most people is going to be the discipline of doing it, the 
sense of resilience that you can build up over time, just being familiar with having an adrenaline in your system. And then the fact that the dopamine increases are huge and long lasting. I mean, they're like 2.5X increases. There's a colleague of mine at Stanford, Anna Lemke, who runs our dual diagnosis addiction clinic. She had a patient getting off cocaine addiction who decided to use cold ice baths as a way to kind of assist himself along the way. You know, he wasn't getting dopamine from cocaine anymore, so he decided to get it from the ice bath. The difference is, is cocaine gives you these sharp increases and then decreases that drop you way below baseline. So what do people do? They go seek more cocaine. It's really pernicious that way. Whereas the ice bath and, and cold showers will give this long arc lasting two to three hours or more. And that's really something to treasure. You know, the idea that you can basically save on your heating bill you know, give yourself this huge dopamine increase. And I think everything points to the fact that it's healthy and good. But I mean, obviously it's working for you to do it after your training. I think all the, the gym rats who want more hypertrophy, you're trying to get an extra, you know, eighth of an inch on their tricep or whatever, they freak out because they hear that it can inhibit hypertrophy. Um, and then for whatever reason, there's this- So wait, so am I doing it wrong? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah clearly you're, <laughs> you're doing it right now. No, you're not. You're, I don't think your hypertrophy is suffering. I actually am of the mind that if you're training really hard, sure, getting in the cold afterwards might blunt some hypertrophy. That is what the data tell us. Andy Galpin's kind of the expert on that literature. But frankly, I don't know anyone that trains really hard with the weights and then gets into the cold that looks like they're suffering from hypertrophy. <laughs> I know a lot of people, however, who love to point fingers at and poke at cold exposure. This seems to be a big thing on social media. People who don't like the cold love to point out the studies showing that the cold screws up everything. Um, and most of them look like they need a few sets in the gym. 